good evening everyone uh, i will be presenting a, a topic on uh, pictorial demonstration of uh, fundus diagram whenever i joined my first before starting whenever i joined my residency as a diploma in first year it was the most difficult part to see the fundus and then redraw on the paper because everything looks uh, upside down and laterally inverted so putting it in a paper in a right way was am i audible right way was a uh, difficult part for me so what all are these requisite for the fundus diagram what all should we have we should have one indirect ophthalmoscope plus 20 diopter lens scleral depression set of color pencils eraser mostly we will in the initial step we may do mistakes so that we need eraser as we become uh, expert we don't need eraser and for most answer do is chart and a clipboard what are what are the points to ponder first thing when we see in indirect ophthalmoscope the image is completely inverted that is it is upside down and right is left and left is right so to draw the fundus diagram we should not invert the image in our mind before drawing else what we can do we can invert the ancillary dubis chart here in this diagram we can see this is the 12 o'clock position this is the 3 o'clock position this is the 6 o'clock position and this is the 9 o'clock position and when the ancillary dubis chart is placed correctly it should be like 12 o'clock should be up and six o'clock should be down, three o'clock should be towards the uh, right, and nine o'clock should be towards the left. So we will invert the answer to this chart and we will put this answer to this chart on the chest of the patient or on the beside the uh, left or right uh, eye, uh, arm of the patient. So it should be like this. So inverted image is drawn on an inverted chart which preserve normal relationship. So when we see and when we draw in this type of chart so we don't have to invert it automatically when we will uh, correct the position of the chart it will get uh, it will be represented in a correct way anatomically correct way all the lesions will be uh, presented in an anatomically correct way so while doing indirect ophthalmoscope or and while uh, drawing the fundus diagram we should not think in terms of superior, inferior, temporal, laser while drawing. We should only think in terms of central and peripheral. And we should stand 180 degree away from the area being observed. Such as if you want to see the superior retina, we should stand towards the uh, fit of the foot of the patient. If you want to see the inferior retina, we should stand towards the head of the patient. Like that, if you want to see the Retina at one o'clock, we should stand at seven o'clock position. Like that, we should do. And no matter on what side the observer stand and whatever appear closest to the observer, uh, observer in the condensing lens is peripheral in the fundus compared to a fundus object that is farther away. Means the object which is farther away in the fundus will appear closest in the lens and the, the uh, lesion which is towards the posterior pole, it will appear farther away in the condensing lens. So few more points that we should understand that macula is the center of circle in the ancillary dubis chart. It's not the disc which is center. Macula is the center and disc, and disc is two disc diameter away from the center. Second thing, what all are the landmarks? Landmarks are equator, ora serrata, junction of pars plana and pars plicata. These three will be represented by the circles in the Amster Dubis chart, arcades, major vessels, long and short posterior ciliary nerves, vortex bay vein. And in Amster Dubis chart, we see three concentric circles. That is one is equator, second is ora serrata, and the outermost part is the junction of pars plana and pars plicata. And the Amster Dubis chart is divided into 12 meridians like a uh, uh, meridians of a clock and it is represented by 1 to 12. So this is the 
uh, standard answer do we start we can see uh, from 12 to 11 there is 12 clock hours and the inner most circle is the equator and the middle circle is the ora serata and the outer most circle represent the junction of pars plana and pars placata along with that is ancillary chart we should write the name of the patient age uh, uh, gender uh, the date which uh, in the day which we have uh, uh, drawn this and the eye also right eye or left eye so here we can see the uh, various landmarks in in that uh, fully dilated fundus so these are the long ciliary uh, nerve above that we can see long ciliary artery there will be four vortex vein at 11 o'clock 1 o'clock 5 o'clock and uh, 7 o'clock position so before going to color coding of each color what each color represent uh, first we will describe the uh, minimum uh, amount of uh, or the the minimum thing that we should draw before drawing the ancillary chart first is the attached retina appear red first thing the center of the ancillary dovis chart is macula it is represented by plus solid line and if it is detached if it is elevated it should be represented by blue and from this two disc diameter away towards the nasal there will be the disc disc will be represented by uh, red circle and the ora serrata from 11 to 5 o'clock position in the right eye and 1 to 7 o'clock position in the left eye is more curved or more dented and from 11 to 5 o'clock position anti clock position the aura is little less dented now coming to the aura serrata it is uh, sorry uh, uh, it is represented by the brown color now coming to vein and artery vein are represented by blue blue line and the artery are represented by red line generally artery only one branch of artery is shown in the diagram in this diagram we can see four vortex vein position at 11 o'clock position one o'clock position five o'clock position and seven o'clock position this is the uh, answer to this chart of right eye now the now the uh, long ciliary nerve is represented by yellow color here we can see long ciliary nerve now coming to different color coding of the fundus diagrams first detached retina detached retina should be drawn in a blue color and any break any break in the retina the outline should be blue in color here we can see all the break and holes are outlined by the blue color further i will be telling uh, what will be the color coding inside the break so detached retina first outline of the break two ora serrata three retinal vein four again outline of the lattice degeneration five outline of the retinal dialysis six these things should be drawn by the by the uh, blue solid lines next outline of the thin retina vitreoretinal traction tuff meridional folds these are also should be drawn by blue solid lines now coming to blue cross lines in which structure blue cross line should be drawn lattice degeneration inside of the lattice generation it should be drawn with blue uh, blue uh, cross white without pressure or white with pressure it, there should be a uh, blue line inside it and the retinocystis there should be cross hatching of blue uh, line in the retinocystis 
if the flap here if edge is rolled it should be outlined by blue line and if there is shifting fluid uh, beneath the uh, retinal uh, tear it should be drawn by uh, 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 breadth blue line and giant retinal tear the inverted flap of giant retinal tear there should be blue line i will be further telling what will be the color coding for the uh, interior of the giant retinal tear now coming to red solids retinal uh, uh, retinal arterial should be drawn with the uh, red solid color full attached retina should be drawn with the red color but in case of diabetic retinopathy or when there is more hemorrhage or there is microaneurysm that time we can omit this uh, red background for the attached retina third if all the retinal break and retinal tear the interior should be the filled with the red solid color here we can see retinal holes horseshoe tears are with uh, are filled with the red color and the in the retinocystis the in the uh, the uh, the holes which is outer layer of the retinocystis it should be uh, filled with uh, red solid color and the open portion of the dialysis should be colored with the red color all the vortex vein should be colored with the red color macula should be color, it should be a plus sign with a red color if it is detached or there is edema we should use blue color all the neovascularization all the neovascularization and an other vascular and abnormalities should be drawn with the red color pre retinal hemorrhage or intra retinal hemorrhage should be drawn with the red solid color dot blot hemorrhage flame shaped hemorrhage should be drawn with the uh, red color and the microaneurysm should also be drawn with the red color even vascular abnormalities here we can see vascular abnormalities these should also be drawn with the red color now coming to bronze solid choroidal detachment choroidal melanoma and choroidal nevus any uveal tissues these should be drawn with a bronze solid color here in this diagram choroidal uh, melanoma is associated with retinal detachment so this detachment is presented with a blue color with solid in uh, with a solid color in the inside representing the choroidal melanoma this is the choroidal detachment pigment beneath the detached retina should be drawn with the brown color i will be telling further what will be the color of the pigment in the attached retina so these are the pigment beneath the detached retina represented by brown color and these are the paving stone degeneration beneath the detached retina so these uh, these to be represented with the brown color even pars plana cyst should be represented by brown solid circle and outline of posterior staphyloma when we see posterior staphyloma that outline should also be drawn with the brown color here the outline of the posterior staphyloma is not shown dr pushkar you need to hurry up please yes ma'am yes ma'am uh, uh so uh, what all the green solids any opacity in the vitreous or media it should be represented by green solid any vitreous membrane should be represented by green solid any vitreous membranes hyaluronic ring intraocular foreign body re retinal operculum silicon oil oil and or any gas should be represented by green color asteroid halo cyst should be represented by green color if there is drop of intraocular lens in the vitreous it should be represented by green color so what all the for the black solid paving stone degeneration in the attached retina 
should be represented by the black solid uh, black solid buckle behind the buckle behind the attached retina should be represented by uh, uh, black if it is uh, uh, if retina is not attached that is detached it should be represented by brown color all the old cryo marks should be represented by uh, black color and pigment un under attached retina should be represented by black color flat neovascularization should be represented by orange color and elevated neovascularization should be represented by purple color drusens hard exudates cotton wool spot should be represented by yellow color if there are too many drusens cotton wool spot hard exudates we can represent by putting c or d around them to to represent it is the uh, cotton wool spot or drusens now any in retinitis pigmentosa rp changes can be represented by black dots old scar old uh, laser mark should be represented by black dots uh, fresh laser mark should be represented by yellow dots